once again to New Beginnings Christian Center. I'm Pastor Bill, and we're celebrating Mother's Day. My good Mother's Day 2020, while we're sheltered in place. Um, wow, uh, this, is, this is an amazing time, uh, an amazing year, but uh, good things are on the way. Good things are on the way. Uh, today, we're, uh, we're celebrating Mother's Day 2020, and today we celebrate moms. Uh, birth moms, step moms, spiritual moms, moms to be. Let's just celebrate women today. Let's let's everybody just say amen and give a hand clap for all the women. Hallelujah, God's creation. I love the women. Yeah, come on. I'm grateful for the children God has blessed me with. I celebrate them because as the Bible says, they're a gift from God. It also says that they're like arrows in a quiver. And blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Uh, that being said, um, I know that Mike and Kimberly are blessed. <laughs> yeah. See, my bio mom is with Jesus. Um, I have so many memories of her. And uh, I'll be the first to admit that I was a handful. And those of you who know me from my childhood, uh, those of you who uh, watch these videos from the Bronx, uh, uh, those who grew up with me know... Uh, yeah, I, I was quite a handful. Uh, I was a typical boy growing up in the Bronx, and uh, I was very curious. I was one of those kids that had to experience everything for myself. That included taking crazy risks and uh, pushing limits. <laughs> I made my own fireworks, had rock fights. Wow. <laughs> I, I can't even talk about some of the things we did at Halloween. That's I can't talk about them anymore. I won't go back there. I'm not trying to glorify my past, but uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, well, then, of course, there was the time that I got arrested. And I believe that broke my mom's heart. And I don't know if she ever really got over it. Um, but after my mom passed away, my sister Dorothy sent me some of her possessions. And uh, there was a couple of things that mom used to carry around with her in her purse. One of them was a picture of her and, and young Billy, my son. And obviously that was very precious to her. And the other thing she carried with her was something that was very special to me. It was the little card uh, from my birth that was on my bassinet at Union Hospital in the Bronx, uh, identifying me as baby boy Nicolay. And it had my weight on it, it was, it was pretty deteriorated. But, you know, I was the firstborn son to my dad, and I think that made my mom very proud because it made my dad very proud. And she carried that with her forever, uh, right up until her death. Um, so, uh, I love you, Mom, and uh, I'll see you when the Lord is done with me. And uh, we could sit down and eat elbow macaronis and crushed tomatoes with pepper, and uh, maybe even some Brerens fish cakes. Yeah, oh boy, how I loved them when, when we had a little bit extra and dad would allow us to have fish cakes with our elbow macaronis on Friday night. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a wonderful thing. And uh, man, I tell you what. Oh, and let's not forget kidney stew. Yum, yum. I tell you, my mom made the best kidney stew. I know some of you would think about that kidney stew. Yeah, well, just, I'm just going to move on. But, so we're going to celebrate the ladies today, but let's get started. Let's get started. This is all about doing business with God today. Uh, this is going uh, to a new level, part two. That being said, we have two texts associated with this, se uh, this teaching series, both from the book of Isaiah. First one is Isaiah 42, 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and, uh, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Remember, I told you that this is, this is, our, this is going to be our thing for this month, that God wants to do extraordinary things through ordinary people, and that's you and me. And uh, our God is a God of action. He's always working. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. In our opening texts, 
And I, I've done this before, and I'm going to do it again. What God is saying, if we paraphrase this, hey, I'm, I'm going to do something new, and before it springs up, I'm going to give you a heads up. I believe the, the signs are so clear today, God is giving us a heads up. Something new is on the horizon, and it's coming quickly. And I believe it's going to be here by May 31st. Somebody say hallelujah. There you go. Come on now. I shared with you last Sunday how I look forward to the first Sunday of every new month because it forces me to open up my, my study notes on the Hebrew calendar. And uh, last week was all about obedience and how uh, obedience, uh, through obedience, God sends provision. And it was all about God being our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. Well, let me remind you that everything that God creates has a purpose and a meaning. And that the Bible tells us that there are appointed times. Let us be reminded that each month has a Hebrew name associated with it. A Hebrew letter of the, of the alphabet associated with it. An appointed time that goes with it and a purpose for it, which includes character development. And an association with one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So once again, with all this information as our foundation for today's lesson, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper to see how we can apply this to our lives and walk with the Lord. Here we go. The Hebrew alphabet letter associated with this month is Zayin. Z-A-Y-I-N. This means receiving mercy for completion. Now this being Mother's Day, I could certainly relate to this meeting. Uh, if, if, if I completed my chores or didn't skip school that day, <laughs> I would receive mercy from my mom. Uh, I was one of those kids who heard uh, quite often, wait till your father gets home. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. Mom wouldn't so much be the one uh, most times to uh, inflict punishment or discipline on me. She'd uh, tell my dad and then my dad would deal with me. I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, I, I, I used to joke about saying my dad was a boxer in the army and he kept up his, uh, his skill on me as a kid uh, because I deserved every bit of it. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not advocating uh, uh, domestic violence or anything, but you know, let's just move on. This is a month to connect your talk to your walk. I want to read to you from Proverbs chapter 10, but I want to include uh, verses 8 through 10, and I'm going to be reading to you from the Passion Translation. Now listen carefully. This is, this is good. This is this, this, today, is, this is what it's all about. It says, The heart of the wise will easily accept instruction, but those who do all the talking are too busy to listen and learn. They'll just keep stumbling ahead into the mess they created. And the one who walks in integrity will experience a fearless confidence in life. But the one who is devious will eventually be exposed. The troublemaker always has a clever plan <laughs> and won't look you in the eye. But the one who speaks correction honestly can be trusted to make peace. Father, I just thank you for your word. Well, these are powerful words. I love my Bible, I love the word. It keeps me on track. Come on, somebody. This speaks of the conduct of the wise and the foolish. These sayings contrast the wise person with the fool. The first speaks of compliance with commands uh, from superiors versus a fool who talks too much to be attentive to them. Have you ever had anybody like that? And maybe, I'm hoping you're not like that. I know there may have been times where I've been like that, where somebody was trying to give me instructions. You go, I know, I know, I know, I got it, I got it, I can do it, I can do it. And then, uh, boy, it gets all messed up because they... They were too smart for themselves. Uh, there's an old uh, German saying, uh, too late, too smart. I'm just going to leave that right there. But the second holds out the promise that security goes with those with integrity. Security follows integrity. But the insecurity of retribution awaits the perverse. Come on, somebody. See, the wise are called to make continuous ongoing progress 
in order to move from one level of strength to the next, bearing fruit and stretching as you go. Somebody say going to the next level. Come on now, going to the next level. We're entering a season of spiritual rebirth, guys. A season of crossover. I like this. I, I was listening to a teaching by Tim Sheets the other night, and he says that we're going from Passover, where this whole thing began with the, uh, the, the, the freedom of the Israelites from bondage in Egypt. So we're going from Passover to crossover. Come on, I relate that to crossing over the Red Sea. But we're going from Passover to crossover. From there, we enter the promise and march into the new Pentecost that's coming. Come on, somebody, the new Pentecost with lots of new opportunities, not the old opportunities. These are brand new opportunities that are coming our way. Now, many of us have been laboring for the Lord and not seeing increase. However, I believe that's all about to change. Some of you have been waiting for your breakthrough, seeing answers to your prayers for finances, relationships, healing, a breakthrough from barrenness. I agree with Tim Sheets that we are in a pregnant pause, getting ready to give birth. Did you hear me now? A pregnant pause. You know, you get to that point in a pregnancy where you know you're about to give birth. Oh man, I tell you, I've, I've witnessed this personally and uh, it seems like a five minutes seems like an eternity. But this is where we're at right now. Something's about to birth. Something's about to come forth. So we are in a pregnant pause right now. Uh, when I read Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54, 1 and 2, I sense that the Lord is speaking directly to me. I want to decree and declare this over each of you today. So bear with me right now as I read this from the New King James Version. Isaiah 54, 1 and 2. It's called a, a perpetual covenant of peace. And the word of God says this. God speaks through the prophet and says, Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Here's the biggie. Enlarge the place of your tent. And stretch, let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. And do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your states. I believe what the Lord is speaking through the prophet today is get yourself ready because more is coming. And I'm talking in a positive way. A positive more. We're in a season of, I believe, what, what, what is called in the Bible, the season of much more. How much more will God, how much more will Jesus, how much more, this is the much more season that's on its way. Come on, somebody. Ah, that's good stuff. Let's keep going here. The tribe associated with this season is the tribe of Zebulon. The tribe of Zebulon was noted for their ability in business and the marketplace. I have a couple of friends that are going to be happy to hear this. So Savan is the business person's month. If you run a small business, if you run a big business, if you're in business, come on somebody, this is the business person's month. God wants you to do some business with him in this month, whether you're a business owner or not. God wants to get down to business with us and maybe even deal with some unfinished business between you and him. Uh-oh, I heard that one coming. <laughs> He wants you to learn prosperity principles because the major characteristic of this month, Savan, is that it is the month of giving. It also is the month of receiving your boundaries. It's the month to be merciful. It's the month of alignment. If I may go all the way back to Genesis, before God was able to fully use Moses, he had to bring his family into alignment. Moses, his wife Miriam, and then his son, his brother Aaron. He had to, the family had to be united. The family had to be aligned with one purpose. 
Come on, somebody. This, this is going to speak to you and your family. This is a month to align your family in faith. Have you heard the term to live life on life's terms? I don't want to live that way anymore. I want to live life on God's terms. I don't want to live life on life's terms. Give me life on God's terms and I'll live it. Tell me what to do, Lord, and I'll do it. This new Pentecost that we're moving into will release a new level of power. Power to bring change. Power to bring revival. Power to bring renewal. Power to be empowered to do beyond we can normally do. Increase productivity. Increase in knowledge. Increase in the ability to create a vast harvest. Power to do the supernatural in the natural. Somebody say amen. Okay. Jesus' church, his ecclesia, will be a church built with living stones. Open your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Peter chapter 2. I want to read from the Passion Translation, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. And I pray this is going to touch your heart and motivate your soul. Here we go. It's all about growing in holiness. So the word of God says this in the Passion. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy, and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life especially now that you have had a taste of the goodness of the Lord Jehovah and have experienced his kindness. It says this, so keep coming to him who is the living stone, though he was rejected and discarded by men, but chosen by God and is priceless in God's sight. Now listen, here it comes in verse five. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary of God. For now you serve as holy priests, offering up spiritual sacrifices that he readily accepts through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, look, I lay a cornerstone in Zion, a chosen and priceless stone. And whoever believes in him will certainly not be disappointed. As believers, you know his great worth. Indeed, his preciousness is imparted to you. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected and discarded has now become the cornerstone and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock to trip over. Oh boy, there's more. They keep stumbling over the message because they refuse to believe it. And this they, and this they were destined to do. But you, somebody say, but you, point to, your, to, point to the next person in the room there with you, uh, point to the TV, point, whatever. Say, but you, but you, you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light, and now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time, you were not God's people, but now you are. At one time, you knew nothing of God's mercy because you hadn't received it yet. But now, you are drenched with it. Drenched in his mercy. This is our reward. Come on, somebody. We've come full circle now, group. The Hebrew alphabet letter associated with this month is Zayin, and Zayin means receiving mercy for completion. Philippians 1.6 in the New King James says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I hope you're hearing this. This is the word of God. Savan is a month of giving, as I said. So if we put the two together, completion and giving, 
we see it as an act of worship. Let me read for you 2 Corinthians 8, 11. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation again. I like, I like bringing in the Passion. 2 Corinthians 8, 11, the Passion Translation said, You should finish what you started. You were so eager in your intentions to give, so go do it. Finish this act of worship according to your ability to give. So let's see if we can't bring this all together. The Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. So you need to ask yourselves, and I ask you today, do you have any unfinished business with the Lord? How about any unconfessed sin? How about some old, habit, old habits that are still ruling your life? It's time to get busy and work with Him to complete what He started in you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for the, for the lesson that you have placed on my heart today to share. First of all, Lord, I want to pray for those who are being negatively impacted by this coronavirus. Lord, I pray that your hand would sweep across the nations and wipe this, this, this nasty, uh, invisible enemy off the face of the earth. I pray for those who have lost loved ones, that you would, you would just touch them, Lord God, and bring the comfort that you've given to so many of us during trial. I pray for, for those who are struggling financially because of the shutdowns. I pray it end to that, that we will be opening soon. I pray for the churches that are anxiously waiting to have normal services once again. Church is essential. Church is essential. Lord, I just thank you for the family and friends and, and uh, strangers even that are watching uh, these uh, virtual uh, preaching messages on YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms. I pray, Lord, that the words that we speak across these airwaves are going to be powerful and bring people to salvation in Jesus Christ. Speaking of that, somebody say amen. Now, if something I said today has touched your heart and you want to join the family of God, it's real simple. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So a simple prayer will suffice to open the door and let you in. And then, then it's just the beginning. And it's so much, so much more. And, and here it is. Just, just confess your sins to him, believing that he died for your sins, and your slate will be wiped clean. Ask him to forgive you. His answer is always yes. And then confess him as Lord of your life. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And let him come into your heart. And, and let him take charge. I often say uh, all of your best decisions have gotten you to where you are today. How's that going for you? So with that being said, I'm going to leave you now to enjoy your Mother's Day. I've ordered a special dinner for my wife and I to celebrate Mother's Day. A prime rib dinner. Oh my goodness, Lord, bless us. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. <laughs> God, I'll provide. So from here, this Sunday, I'm going to take a little drive to a local restaurant where they're have this special going. I'm going to pick it up, bring it home, and my wife and I are going to sit down and have a quiet dinner together and celebrate life. And later on, hopefully, uh, it's all going to come together. We're going to have our, our Zoom meeting with our kids and grandkids, and uh, so we're real excited. So until we see each other again, God bless you, the Lord keep you, God have His face to shine upon you, and give you rest. So be blessed. I love you. See you real soon.